Hello folks, my name is Lane Allen and today we're going to be talking about mitosis still. Hopefully you're watching both videos on the same day, but if you aren't, whatever. So long as you get all your stuff done before the due date, everything's good. All right, so let me go over to our PowerPoint real quick. Come on. There we go. So animal cell mitosis is going to look a little bit different than our plant cell mitosis. Let's go ahead and go through these phases. So the first phase that we're going to be looking for is interphase. Man, that is not a terribly good looking interphase. I do say so myself. But quite frankly, a lot of these interfaces don't exactly look great. They kind of all look like little pink boogers, if I'm being perfectly honest. But that's the trick. You got to be able to figure out uh, what's going on with these little pink boogers. What's the difference between all of them? You will need to know this for the practical. So let's go and find our first phase of the cell cycle prophase, not a part of mitosis, part of the cell cycle. So we might ask you tricky questions about that. So here we are looking at our specimen at 40x total magnification, which means we are on the lowest magnification uh, I can go on my microscope. This is where a lot of students in normal years uh, would have difficulty because they see this little pink dot and they go, aha, I found the cell. Uh, I can't see crap. Okay, well, that's because you haven't found the cell. You've found the embryo. So if you're looking at a, a white fish embryo and we aren't just looking at a whole embryo. What we're looking at is an embryo in early, very early development after it's been uh, fertilized and it's started to undergo mitosis. And we're in that kind of grace period in between a single cell and where things start differentiating and turning into eyeballs and spines and gills and that sort of business. Anyways, and that's also why we chose uh, this particular um, organism as our model organism for this lesson because there is, should be a lot of mitosis going on in a white fish embryo very early on in development. So in order to see the good stuff, we have to get down to a higher magnification. So let's go ahead and hop it on up. All right, so let's find an interphase. Let's go on over. I'm going to have to hit a higher magnification still, be able to decide which one of these I like for interphase. Hmm. Spoiled for choice. Quite a few good ones. Well, marginal ones. Okay, I like this one all right. But just because we can, they were going to go up to a thousand X magnification at this point. Woo! All right, there we go. Got a little immersion oil. That's because it has a different refractive index than the air that the light would have to pass through to get to the lens. So by using this immersion oil, basically we reduce the amount of times that the light is bent and are going to increase our accuracy of the images perceived using this method. All right. Uh, 
this is about a good as good a one as any. So right here, what we are seeing is our animal cell in interphase. Now we have to get a lot higher magnification to see anything good, right? So what you might notice is that eh, it still kind of looks like a little pink booger, right? That's because your DNA is uncondensed. It is in the form of chromatin. So again, it's just kind of little grainy stuff at this point. Another key feature is that we, you can see the edge of your nucleus in this image. Let's go ahead and snap a picture of that. Go back to the video. You know, and I think that'll be a little bit clearer in the picture. Meh, splitting hairs. Whoops. All right. So let's go back to the PowerPoint real quick. The next phase we're going to look for is prophase. So you might notice it is a whole lot darker than our interphase. That's because our chromatin has condensed into chromosomes, but they're still hanging out in a little pile in the center where the nucleus was. So let's go back. Probably learn how to use that new share button. There we go. Anyways, and let's find ourselves plant cell in prophase. And I didn't have to go very far. Looky there, that's a nice, good looking plant cell in prophase. <clears throat> so as I focus through it, you might see a few slight changes. So the key characteristics to look for is A, how much darker your genetic material is. B, you no longer have that nice discrete nucleus. We see over here in this portion that is in focus on this cell that is in interphase, you see that nice neat edge on the nucleus. Over here, you cannot distinguish that structure anywhere. That is because the nuclear envelope has dissolved and no longer exists. So if you write that there's a nucleus in your uh, sketch of your prophase cell, you're gonna lose points. I keep saying this because I dock points for this all the time. So make sure you understand that in prophase, your DNA has gone from chromatin to chromosomes, that is its current state. There's no longer a nucleus, and they're just hanging out in the center, just in a big old pile. So let's go ahead and snap a picture of this. I think that's a pretty decent photo. Yep. And let's go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint real quick. So the next one we're gonna be looking for is metaphase, where they line up right down the middle. Like I said, animal cells tend to do this uh, in a much more uh, conspicuous way than plant cells do. So let's go back to the microscope real quick, and I should be able to find a good plant cell in metaphase. I mean, animal cell in metaphase. Uh, metaphase specifically. So that one is metaphase. What I'm seeing there, but it's kind of at a funky angle, where it's difficult to see what exactly is going on. Oh uh, man. There's another decent one. That one's all right too. I should be able to find a good classy one. Typically the metaphases are very nice and distinct.
And you know what? I might just scroll straight up and bam, here we are on another slice of an embryo. And I can look here, find myself a better specimen that I like a little bit more. All right, yep, bingo. There it is, whoo, good looking. So. Let me try and get it centered for y'all. So here is our animal cell in metaphase, meta for middle. They're lined up right down the middle. So remember that, metaphase, middle phase, lined up in the middle. And then you see all these little tiny, very fine pink fibers. What, what could those be? Well, they're spindle fibers, of course. And remember, they are pulling these, they never push, okay? So they're attached to our centrioles or centromeres out here, and they are pulling these chromosomes apart. At this point, our sister chromatids are still attached. So we've got little X's. As we go into anaphase, they will start to detach and they will then be daughter chromosomes. So let me go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint real quick. So the next one we're gonna be looking for is anaphase. So let's go back to our microscope real quick. And I think I saw a pretty good one up here. That's a, a little bit too far down the line. That one, but uh, all right, that's pretty good. Any other top contenders I should think about? And now that'll do. That'll do, pig. Okay, duck. So here is our animal cell anaphase. So remember, key features about this phase is that we have now daughter chromosomes. You can see there's a little bit of space in between them now because they have separated. Once they separate, they're no longer sister chromatids. They're now daughter chromosomes. Make sure you address that in your sketches. Again, we still have spindle fibers on the outside, pulling them this way out, away from one another. They are not pushing them apart from the center out. They're pulling them apart, okay? Did I get a picture of metaphase? No, I did not. I'll have to go back real quick. Anyways. All right, that's a pretty good image. So that is our anaphase. All right, and the last one we are going to be looking for is going to be our telophase and cytokinesis. So go back to the microscope one last time. And yep, sure enough, I remember seeing a very 
good looking telophase and cytokinesis right over here. Whoops, didn't have the video going. There we go. So, here are our two daughter cells forming. So you can see that uh, your chromosomes have started to kind of group back up together. They're starting to come unbound. They're about to have a nuclear envelope form around them. So these are uh, what are going to turn into the two new daughter nuclei. If I focus through a little bit more, in certain planes of focus, you can see it very nicely. You can see where this cell is starting to pinch itself into two cells. And that is called the cleavage furrow. And this is the type of cytokinesis displayed by animal cells. Hint, hint, that's a question somewhere that you should answer. Anyways, so that is what we're assuming there, cleavage furrow, because uh, all these terms are come up with by a bunch of old scientists back in the day are kind of you know, perverted. Well, that's the way it goes. Anyways, let's take a picture of a, our nice animal cell in telophase and cytokinesis. There we go. All right. Uh -oh. Wonder what that could be. All right. So that concludes our video for animal cell mitosis. If you have any remaining questions, please feel, uh, do not hesitate to email your designated lab instructor. Make sure you. Uh, do your sketches, draw the important features. Again, because this is a mitosis lab, the important features for this one are going to be what form it, the DNA is in and what's going on to it. Where is it going? So, anaphase, it's chromatin in a nucleus. Prophase, nucleus is gone. You now have chromosomes. Metaphase, they're lined up in the middle. M, mid, meta for middle, okay? You've got spindle fibers on the outside pulling them apart. Anaphase is once they are separated. You no longer have sister chromatids attached. You now, you now have daughter chromosomes. Lastly, you have telophase, which is where you're, uh, they're completely separated. They are starting to reform daughter nuclei, and you have some sort of cytokinesis being displayed, whether that's a cell plate or a cleavage furrow, depends on whether uh, you're a plant or an animal. One last thing to remember, when you are drawing these sketches of your animal cells, this outside boundary is your cell membrane. Remember on your plants, you will have a cell wall and a cell membrane, both of those. Okay, so. Do your sketches. If you have any trouble, email your lab instructor. Y'all have a wonderful day.